Um, if you would unmute your microphone, please. Is that okay? I do hear you. Not not real loud. I think you might want to talk into your microphone for the questioning. Let me first ask you: is that is that the correct spelling of your name is listed on the screen there? Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you, Officer Terman. At this point, then, Mr. Wood, if you'd like to call that witness. Thank you, uh, Mr. Terman. Can you state oh, your name and spell he needs it to be for the placed, record? Sorry, I'm, he needs to be placed under oath as well before. Oh. We so, uh, Officer Terman, if you'd please raise your right hand, I'll have Madam Clerk place you under oath. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you will give in the pending cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. I do. Okay, thank you. You can inquire, Mr. Wood. Thank you. Can you state your name? For the record and spell your last name it's shane terman spelling of my last name is t u r m a n thank you uh and what's your title i'm the chief of police for the city of rexburg in the state of idaho okay how long have you been the chief of the rexburg police uh 10 years and uh, this december will be 11 years Okay, and how long have you worked for the Rexburg Police Department? Uh, approximately 33 years. Okay. Uh, have you ever served as a detective? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. Are you familiar with the case regarding Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell? Uh, yes. How have you been involved in that case? Well, as the chief of police, I've... Uh, known that it's been going on. My detectives that work here have been uh, the, some of the key detectives in, in this case. And so as the chief of police, I've had to make uh, funds available and see to, to their needs and staffing uh, so that they could perform their duties in this investigation. Okay. Um, and so have you worked with your detectives and their involvement in this case? Uh, just getting updates from them. Okay. I have an investigation myself. Okay, so you haven't investigated it, but uh, what has your detectives division involvement been in this case? Uh, they've been involved in this case uh, from basically uh, day one. Uh, I believe it was starting um, November 1st of 2019 uh, when we received a phone call from a detective in Gilbert, Arizona, asking us to look for a uh, Jeep uh, that was, they believed that was involved in a possible crime down there. Okay. And let me, let me go back for just a second. How many detectives do you have in your detectives division? I have six. Okay. Uh, and is that the current number? That is the current number. Okay. Have you had any detectives that have worked on this case that have since retired? Uh, yes, I've had uh, one detective that, uh, I've had two detectives retire since this case started, uh, but one of them was the really the only one that was working on it uh, out of those two. Okay. Um, and our, as the chief, are you, aware that the detectives who've worked on that case could be subpoenaed as witnesses to testify at trial? Yes, I'm aware of that. Okay. And I just want to ask you a few questions about if a change of venue in this case is granted and the trial is moved, what kind of cost does the Rexburg Police Department uh, incur as a result of that? Um, well, for, it, for instance, if we go to, uh, the city has a, uh, a scale for per diem. And so uh, we would have to pay per diem for each one of those detectives along with, uh, depending on how far out it was, if it was a place where we'd have to get them a hotel room, uh, we'd have to get each one of them a room. Uh, and for the city, roughly, uh, it's about $71 a day per diem going off of uh, some place like Boise, Ada County, most places. Does that per diem amount change depending on where the location is? Uh, it can, but uh, the 71 is pretty close to most of the places in the state of Idaho. 
Okay. So you mentioned per diem costs, you mentioned hotel costs. Are you responsible for their travel costs? Uh, yes. So we would pay for uh, a hotel room for each one of those in detectives plus their per diem. Okay. Chief of the detectives you have now, do you know how many of them have been significantly involved in the Ballot Abel case? Yes, I have five out of my six detectives that have been significantly involved. Okay. And in the event they were subpoenaed for trial, and we don't know how long the trial would last, but I think we can assume it would last several weeks. What effect would that have on your detectives division in Rexburg? Uh, well, you know, the number one thing is the chief I'm responsible for is the protection of our citizens here. And, uh, you know, we, as you know, we have a college with 22,000 students and each one of those detectives is carrying a caseload uh, uh, dealing with all kinds of uh, different crimes. Uh, it would really uh, hinder us because I'd only have one detective that would be available to handle all that. Our detectives are, are trained, uh, highly trained, in fact, in things that a lot of our patrol officers aren't trained in. And so, you know, for instance, interviewing and in, interrogation and things like that. And, uh, you know, right now, a lot of our cases that our detectives are dealing with deal with child abuse, sexual assault type cases. There are some major cases as I'm well. Just, as I'm going to object at this point. We're getting a little off the mark in terms of uh, uh, the dissertation. Well, it's objections overruled, um, but I would ask you to keep uh, the questioning in line of the scope of this hearing, Mr. Wood. Okay. Um, so, so Chief, just to make sure we understood what you were saying, is it your testimony that um, it would cause a hardship for the detectives department if they were subpoenaed for a significant amount of time out of their jurisdiction? Absolutely. Okay. Um, are you aware, does, does the Rexburg City Police Department work with and coordinate with other law enforcement agencies in the area? Yeah, we work with Fremont County, Madison County, Jefferson, uh, Bonneville. We're on a critical incident task force, so we help uh, our detectives go to those uh, uh, critical incident task force clear down to Pocatello at times, as well okay. as helping on, on other cases when, when we're called upon. Okay, thank you. Uh, the state has no further questions at this time. All right, cross-examination, Mr. Pryor. So how would I address you, officer? Would I offer, address you as a sheriff or what would I, what would be your uh, police chief, police? chief of police? All right, I wanna show due respect. Uh, chief, uh, with all of these uh, agreements with the other counties, um, we're assuming, aren't we, that all five of your detectives will be testifying at the same time, right? Uh, I don't know. I, right. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm guessing they wouldn't all be testifying at the same time. Okay. When, right, when would they be called up? I don't know. Okay, well, if one of them were called one day and then went back home and the other one was called a different day and then went back home and then another one was called on a third or fourth day and went back home and a fifth one was called on a day and went back home. Is it possible that you could get help from Bonneville, Jefferson, Madison County, Fremont County for each of those one days for an additional law enforcement officer to help you while the one officer is testifying or even two? That's possible, isn't it? Well, it's not as easy as that. It's, uh, it's not like I can call in a, one of the other detectives to come in and handle one of my officer's cases that they're working on. Well, it may not be working on the cases, but if there's necessity that there's some patrolling or other things to do, uh, it's not going to impact a case if a detective is taking a few hours off from a case and has to take a day off and then work on the case the next day. You'd agree with that, right? Yeah, if I was just missing one detective for a right. day. I'm... So, so spacing them out or accommodating your schedule with your detective so it doesn't have an impact, that's something that's a viable alternative, isn't it? It would depend on how far they've got to travel. Okay. 
All right. Now, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Obviously, you have detectives that are within your organization that are um, involved in this case, right? That is correct. And they obviously can't be concerned with the uh, um, uh, cause, you know, providing security for Ms. Vallow. She's, she's in the Rexburg. Is she in Madison County or is she under your supervision with Rexburg? She did, neither her or Chad are under our supervision. They're, well, they're under Fremont, but they're housed in Madison. Well, not anymore, is she? So I guess the, the, my question is this. Um, um, well, you know, Judge, I'll, I'll draw back on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save that for a later day. I don't think I have any more questions, Judge. Thank you. All right. Any redirect, Mr. Wood? Um. Not at this time, Your Honor, no. Okay, uh, thanks, Chief Terman. That'll conclude your testimony then. Thank you for your appearance this afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor.